come to the channel. So I'm starting a new series of reviews or like this. No, let's call them reviews or different old objects. I have a quite a large collection of antique cameras and other stuff and I'm just going to go through them with you. Uh, I will make at some point when I will have my new office ready, uh, I will make more work about or more videos about restoration and stuff like this. So now it's just about reviews and looking at old cool things. So many of the cameras which I have, why I gotten them? Because they used to be the iPhones, the top of the technology at the time they were sold. Very expensive products. Now people don't think much about them. So let's look what they look like. Uh, here's the first one uh, I'm showing you. This is a brand name is Calart. Uh, it's a camera. Uh, this is the box that it came with when you bought it new. Maybe there was some cardboard that never survived really well. Uh, there's things are made of brass. This one still needs restoration and work. This is as such as I originally got it. Uh, brass part here. Uh, beautifully, like this is embedded into the leather, kind of like embossed and with some gold paint, whatever. Um, handle, everything very robustly made. Stitches are really beautifully made. Here's also handles which had a leather strap. Most of the old cameras which I have, the leather straps are long gone. Ugh. So the hem here, very thick leather, very robust. I mean, this is now a bit dirty and so on, but I mean, this was really top of the line leather at its time. Everything made with heavy duty brass. It's in this condition. This was uh, camera was made somewhere between 1948, early 1950s. There are a lot more information, more accurate detail, which you can find online. So I recommend you go to that. So continuing, I had to push these buttons to open this up. Let's see what's inside. Oh, this is typical of camera still in 50s, the more expensive one. Real velvet inside, so soft or plush or whatever this is called, but soft stuff. Anyway, beautifully made straps, everything. No artificial materials or the ones we know as artificial ones. So let's see what we have here. Uh, film holders. I'm not sure how many of these are. Okay, someone wrote something here. That may filter well photograph information. Uh, sometimes these have still the film or the glass plates, whatever it was used. Uh, I mean, there was both available at the time. Uh, you basically put the film you in darkness. You load the films inside, put the covers. You put this in the camera. Remove this one. Take film, close it, and yeah. So these where the films were hold. They were large size, high resolution usually. At least, I mean, not really comparable to digital nowadays, but back in the days, this is, and there were different sizes. This is three quarter uh, times four quarter of an inch graphic film holder made in US by Graflex in Rochester. So uh, this one came with at least, maybe not originally, these are a bit heavier. These probably have the glass inside still. So it came with these, but to put your film, quite a lot of individual pictures so usually one of these horse you can have at least these ones they have two images two films per holder so uh, whatever the area here is times two is the images you can take what else we have here okay here's the leather strap yeah i was wondering where this this is not in too bad condition but it's all full brass beautifully made feels really strong in fingers after what, 50, 70 years ago? This camera is 70 years old and it's still in excellent condition. You can even, even the smallest bits of brass look like this one here. Uh, I'm not sure if I could get the camera, but everything was engraved like who did it and everything. This is made in the US. I mean, the level of detail compared to what you can now is, is really incredible. What else do we have here? Oh, this is the, okay. okay, here it is. So this is the flashlight, you attach it to the camera, there goes the lamp, flashlight of the time. That was the latest technology back then. Uh, what else? Uh, uh, 
uh, this is some sort of adapter to the camera lens to attach filters and things. Ah, here's a yeah, this is a quick lamp holder. You can attach it here and you can just change the bulb with this lever quickly because they were one time usable. So, uh, and they were really hot. I, I've used a few of them myself, and you really they're really hot for touch. So, having this leather, it's easy just to pop it out. Um, what else? Ah, here's the manual handbook for the colored camera, price 50 cents. Uh, I believe this was made, this camera was made in New York. Um, mm -hmm. Let's lift this up from here. Okay, is there anything else there? Oh, this is some piece of plastic. Interesting. I have no idea where this goes. So, I haven't restored this camera. So uh, the condition isn't terribly good. I doubt it's working. My plan is at some point to make it work. So let's see. Here's where your viewfinders. It has two viewfinders. One there and adjustment knobs on and off and uh, all kind of things. I mean, you can find online a lot more descriptions about this camera, but the level of detail in every single knob uh, let me see. It's really like grooves, lines. This are these painted? Yeah, these are just painted there. There's f f place for flash holder, all kind of levers, beautiful milled aluminium or steel. Okay, so here's more. Here's I guess this is place for batteries. So maybe the one I have here. Ah, it's the battery cover. Okay. Uh, here so you put batteries into the camera, everything's written text, there's electronics, really, I mean, you can, it's hard to describe, but it's really, everything is so high quality. It's dirty, but some of the stuff here, it's just plain dirt, accumulation of how long, who knows how many years. So here's the front, uh, these are rangefinder. So basically you threw one or this one and the other hole is basically meant for you to give a double image and when you focus the camera the images kind of go on top of each other. There was no automatic focus back then so you had to manually focus it with a knob usually probably inside here and the images which are two from these in your eyes they just when you focus when their correct distance is set they're on top of each other and align. So this is how it basically works. Here's an ad attachment for the tripod, has been used. Uh, this is some sort of knob. Okay, I need to again put this down. Okay, we're back. Uh, so I opened this door and this thing was here with the lens and everything was inside there. It's attached to the back of the camera with bellows which are light tight. So the film goes in the back underneath here. You slide that cassette underneath there. Uh, yeah, this is yellowed out because I think it's because of the lacquer or whatever has yellowed out. Or it's brass. Difficult to tell. So you pull this out. Um, here's the lens and the shutter. Uh, basically, you there's a mechanism here which winds the shutter. It's a purely mechanical one. It's, it's like a small... The insides are like from a Swiss watch. It's, it's beautiful, fine mechanics. Everything is serrated, these edges, beautiful, really hard black paint. Even the screws have small details in them. Things are engraved instead of just painted, engraved and painted inside the grooves. Uh, these knobs here, you can actually, oh, let me see if I can lift this up. Uh, yeah, and with this one you can rotate or not. I think these are supposed to be used for um, now moving this back and forth. Uh, I haven't, I have once opened this from my package, took some pictures, but that's of this. But So I need to get to know this one much better. Um, like I said, I haven't had my Repair set up for a long time. I haven't had an office where I would have enough space to do with all the repairs and maintenance needed for this. So these have just been sitting and waiting. And hopefully soon I will be able to do more videos about this. 
the process of repair and getting them working. Um, yeah, there's the distance scale. But then again, you can also set it from here. And there's the nice sign. Even this one. Oh yeah, it's, it's engraved and then filled with paint. Really, really beautiful. I mean, it's, it's aesthetic. But let's forgive this. It's, if it was made in between 48, around 52, whatever, this camera is now 70, over 70 years old. So, and it's amazingly beautiful. Everything is made so accurately. They didn't really make any sacrifices. In every small detail of mechanics, you can see everything is made. Try to make it look also visually beautiful and functional. And this was meant for professional use by professional, what they call press photographers. If I'm correct, this one had a lot of dub, like fail-safe features on built into this that you could like take two images on the same film or whatever. So it was quite advanced and most of it was funny enough, I guess, mechanic. Uh, mechanical, so they were always working, no problem with failing electronics. I mean, this one, I believe this is, yeah, look, feels like real leather, not sure. And you could have switch your eye left or right sided, I guess, to which side you wanted. Uh, actually, this one would go here. Yeah, so like this. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. It's quite, uh, how do I, oh, here's a handle, yeah. Oh boy, it's heavy. It's it's rather compact and nice. If you look from here, the, the slides alone, how they're embedded inside each other, sliding back and forth, all the parts, all the details. They left, you see, they made grooves here to accommodate the lens when it falls back up. Uh, small details there. Everything's painted with this beautiful black crackle paint, which is really hard, doesn't really wear out. Uh, you can even see some of the focusing mechanisms, the mirrors, the prisms. Oh, there's some engraving in the glass there. Oh, yeah. So, when you think about like 70 years ago, what was the stuff we did? You know, was some simple stuff in boxes? Was, no. Uh, I have found that the box cameras, for example, of the time, which everyone is saying like, yeah, that's, that's the level of technology we had. No, that's not true. That's the level of technology that cost you a few dollars. That was cheap. That was the throwaway, one-time usable stuff all the time. So, no, this is what we could do, or maybe even better, but this is a good example. And when you look at everything that's recyclable now, like, or non-recyclable, actually, just run away. And, I mean, this is a gem. It, it's... Even as an object, even if not photographing, it's, it's utterly beautifully made. Every corner is made round, beautiful, colors, shape. And you know, when you look at just a knob, like here is one here. The level, level of detail put into making that knob that it feels good in your finger, it's quite amazing. And it still survived, not worn out. I have a feeling, oh, there's also... More text, small blackhead, beautifully made. And this paint which they used back in the day, it's really hard. It's really hard. It's, I've tried to replicate it a few times myself. With the modern paints, not so easy. It's really, really difficult to get it correct way. Oh, if it opens. Oh, it's broken. Oh, maybe it's partly broken. But there's a glass, basically. Okay, you can see my reflection, but... The point is that uh, when you have the lens on, open, you can, the image goes through here and you can, instead of the viewfinder, you can have a larger image to view. A bit like in the modern digital cameras, you have a screen in the back. And what else? Another accessory, you have a small magnifying lens here, which we can more accurately look at the zoom. So basically you have a screen like in a digital camera with all kind of these fancy features, like in a modern digital camera. and you have a zoom into the image, just like in a modern digital camera. Handbook for the colored camera, price 50 cents. This handbook is especially prepared for colored camera number. I guess uh, one would have needed to write the serial number there. Uh, there's the picture of the camera. Identification parts. Oh, there's the camera. 
I think actually I just need to read this. Rangefinder image, luminous viewfinder, yeah. Uh, that's a focus spot. Oh, I think that's uh, something that's supposed to help you. It will uh, add light to the focusing image so that you can see from the viewfinder better what you're focusing in darkness. Ground class, ah, here's one, the electric brain. The sensation electric brain, exclusive with a class camera, actually thinks for you, making it impossible for you to get blank negatives or fire flash lamps prematurely. Electric brain. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, you could have a second flash. Okay. Operating the shutter. Uh, I mean, typically. Looks like never, no one ever read. Oh, you can extend it that far. So it looks like no one ever really <laughs> read this manual. It's in so good condition. Wow. So, that's first one of my many cameras and other old stuff I'm going to be reviewing in the videos. Thank you for watching. Please like, uh, subscribe and all that stuff. Thank you.